Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Keith, so much for that beautiful song. Oh my gosh, I was just enjoying that song so much. It was just ministering to me. If we will only just trust him, that's, if we could only just trust him, that's what he require, requires of us, just to trust him. And don't lean on your own understanding. You know, we can always try to work it out in our own strength. And we can always try to say, if I do this, and if I do that. But why not commit our ways onto God and trust him to work it out? I just want to say good afternoon. Lovely to see you, Queen J. <laughs> oh, it's always, it's always lovely when, when people put their cameras on. Oh, it's just beautiful. Oh, lovely to see you. You're looking so well. Uh, that beautiful smile, I can see it's back. Oh, bless you. Well, thank you, Keith, so much for um, opening up with that for the with the worship songs and uh, welcome, Doris. Long time, Doris. We haven't seen you for a while, but we are grateful to God that you are still uh, um, blessed and highly favored of God. Um, just want to say a big welcome to Daniel. God bless you, Daniel. I know that it's not been easy, but God's grace is sufficient for you. His grace is able to keep you and carry you. Um, Daniel's had a loss of his uh, grandfather this week. His grandfather passed away at 102. But we thank God. Think about the blessing. 102. How many people can live to that age? 102. We are just so grateful to God for his life. And he did give his heart to the Lord as well at 100. And, uh, <laughs> you know, God made sure that he give his heart to the Lord before he, 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 he took him home. So we are so grateful for that wonderful testimony, Daniel. We hope you're keeping strong. I know it's not easy having a, a, a loss, but we just pray God's strength over you and uh, uh, just God bless you all for this afternoon. We are, we're going to have a good time in the Lord because every time we come into his presence, we expect great things. We expect good things. And uh, God never disappoints. He always, always gives us a word of encouragement, something to lift us, something to encourage us. You know, this week I was feeling so kind of rough. I was fighting a cold. And I said, no, I'm not having this. I was rebuking it. And uh, and uh, to God be the glory. Um, I, I have come out on top and... Uh, that's what we've got to do. We're not going to allow the enemy to, 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 to defeat us. We are going to be more than a conqueror. We're going to be more than a victory. So we thank God for each and every one of our lives. Thank you, Keith. You haven't been around for a little while, but we thank God that you are still still um, able to come on and, and to minister the music for us. And not only that, but God has a word for you today. God has a word, a word of in season you know i love how god just just hits the target i love how he's just direct he knows all everything about everything and that's what i love about god and this afternoon i'm just going to open up in prayer and uh commit this time to god uh i'm excited for what god's gonna do i'm always excited i'm like a kid in a in a, in a sweet shop i just want to see what god's gonna do because he always, uh, always, um, he always um, comes through just on time, on time, never late, never late. He's always on time. So I just want to open up in prayer. Father, we thank you for this afternoon's uh, 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 time that we can come together, Father God, to worship and to adore you, to give you glory, to give you praise. And Father, we know. Father, if it hadn't been for your grace and your mercy, where would we be right now? Where would we be right now? But Father, you kept us another week. Father, you protected us from harm and danger. You've protected us from accident. Father, when the enemy tried to come up and to set a trap for us, Father, they stumbled and they fell. 
Father, I thank you. You put a hedge around every single one of us, Father. I thank you for your protection. I thank you for your covering. I thank you that we are in your pavilion. I thank you that you are the good shepherd and you care for the sheep. Father, you care for us. We are the sheep of your pastures. And Father, you are the good shepherd. You provide for us. You lead us and you guide us. Father, you help us. You restore our souls. Father, you cause us to lie down in green pastures. You cause us to be well watered. And Father, I thank you that, Lord God, even though we might walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Father, we will fear no evil, for thou art with us. You will never leave us or forsake us, no matter what the temptation, no matter what the test, no matter what the trial, no matter what the enemy is saying. We silence every negative word of the enemy right now. Say it and we bind you right now from off of every single person that will come. Uh, come onto this platform and every single person that will uh, try um you try to attack we break the power of it over every single person right now in the name of jesus father we thank you for your protection father you pull a hedge around each and every one of us father i thank you father under your mighty wings we will abide father god we know no evil can, cannot withstand the presence of god and father thank you that we will daily dwell in your house forever we thank you that goodness and mercy is following us they're chasing after us they're running us down goodness and mercy continue to run us down and chase us down father i thank you for your goodness and your mercy father if it wasn't for your goodness if it wasn't for your mercy father god you said that we would be so dis uh, despair but but because of your goodness we can see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Father, I thank you that you are a good, good father. You are a merciful father. Father, I love you so much. And I just bless you for every single person that is coming on this afternoon, Father God. I pray that our hearts will be prepared to receive a word from you. I thank you that our Lord God, whatever is burdening us, any burden and any heaviness, I command it to go right now in the name of Jesus. Any spirit of guilt and shame, we bind you now from every single person right now. Every spirit spirit that will come to try and bind us up, we, bind, we destroy you now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we come against every fiery dart of the wicked. We say it will all fall to the ground right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory for what you're going to do today. We love you and we praise you and we adore you. Oh, Father, I just pray that you, as we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Come now, Holy Spirit. Come now into this into this space. Come in, into our, into the, we welcome you right now. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Father. We don't want to go do anything without you, Lord. With, because, Lord, without you, we are absolutely nothing. So we commit our hearts, our minds, our souls, our everything. Everything that we say and do, Father God, we commit to you, Father. Help us to trust in you. Help us to wait upon you. Help us to depend on you. Father, give us the strength to keep holding on. Father God, where we've grown weak or weary, Father God, I pray for renewed strength, renewed power, renewed energy will come back into our body right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now that this is the day that you have made, a brand new day, Father, and we are going to rejoice. We are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it, for this is a day that you have made, Father. We just want to say, Lord God, we honor you, we praise you, we, we worship you, and we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, I am going to rejoice. Hallelujah. I am going to rejoice. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I came to give him glory. I came to lift him up. And I'm telling you, when you think about his love, when you think about his grace, the mere fact that you're still here, <laughs> that's proof enough that God has kept us. 
We don't keep ourselves. God has kept us. He has kept us alive and he's kept us uh, covered. And we are his children. And you know, God looks after his kids. He knows how to look after his kids. I'm telling you, uh, he never, ever, ever, ever will let even our foot dash against a stone. I'm telling you, he will make sure he protects. You know how you do when you got your kids and they're crossing the road and it's dangerous. You know, you make sure that you hold their hands and you hold it tight. And that's what God does. He holds our hands and he leads us through the storms. No matter how with the wind blowing, no matter how it's raining, no matter how it's thundering, he's holding our hands. And once you know that God is holding your hands, you know you're okay. You know when your child's holding your hands, I'm telling you that child is secure. And that's what we are. We are secure. We are secure. We have nothing to fear, nothing to be worried about. If we worry, it's because we're in our own flesh and we're not trusting God. But as long as God is with you, nothing, nothing can be, or no one can be against you. Nothing can be against you. As long as God is for you. Ah, oh, I just love that. Because, you know, who, who, who can content with God? Who is higher than God? Nobody. Amen. Nobody is greater than God. And, if, if, and you know that if God is for you, don't worry about what nobody else want to say. They, they can't do nothing because God has got you. And uh, I just wanted to read a, a quick uh, chapter from Psalms 39. And uh, I just want to read it. Uh, I'm going to read it from the Amplified. And this is what it says. It says, oh, Lord, you have searched me thoroughly. I love, I love the Amplified because it just says, you know, you know, I'm just searching me on the surface, but you've searched me thoroughly. That means he's gone right out from the head to the toe. He's searched every area of us. He searched us thoroughly and he knows you know me. He knows, he knows everything about us. You know when I sit down. <laughs> you know when I rise up. Imagine God knows when you go to bed. He knows when you wake up. <laughs> he knows when you're tired. He knows when you're when you're hungry. He knows when you're sad. He knows when you're you're happy. He knows everything about you. He said he knows us. He searched us. He knows us. He knows when we go when we sit down, and he knows when we rise up. He knows everything about our entire life. It says in verse two, you understand my thoughts from, a, from afar. That means even before you think about it, even before you think about that thought, God's already know what you're going to think. Before you even say anything out of your lips, God knows what we're going to say. He knows what we're going to say. He knows what we're thinking. He knows everything. Verse three said, you scrutinize my path and my lying down, and you are intimately acquainted with all my ways. God gets involved in every single detail. I'm telling you, God don't just touch the surface. He goes deeper. He knows our innermost parts. People see us on the surface, but they, don't, they can't see what's going on inside. And we might be happy on the outside. We might dress up the outside and look good. But God knows what's going on inside our heart. God knows when we're eating up. God knows when we're sad. God knows when we're hurt. God knows when we're broken. Yes, he does. God knows when we're discouraged. God knows everything he sees on the innermost parts, the secret parts. Yes. God knows all those parts, what man can't see. Verse um, 4. It, even before there was a word in, on my tongue, <laughs> You know all about it. Behold, oh Lord, you, you know all about it. Uh, so remember I was saying God knows our thoughts. He doesn't just know our thoughts. God knows God knows us before we was even created in our mother's womb. Imagine that. God even knew us before our mom and dad knew each other. God knew us from the foundation of the world, before the whole world was created. God knew us. God knew, so God knows our days. He knows our everything. 
He knows he knows the hairs on her head. He knows he's counting them. He knows everything about it. Glory to God. And verse 4 says, verse 5, And you have enclosed me, and you have enclosed me behind and before. God says he's, he's, he's got us. He's got us like in a, in, in a, he's got our front. He's got our back. He's got our side. He's got everything. He has enclosed us. He knows, he says he knows us every, our every move. Verse, um, verse uh, six. Such infinite knowledge is too wonderful for me. <laughs> you know, this knowledge that I, what we, what, when we think about all what God does and all God, God knows, when we think about it, we're just, it, it's, too, it's too wonderful for me. In other words, it, it just blows my mind. When I think of the billions of souls on this planet, and God knows each and every one of us by name, oh my gosh, he knows everything. He, he knows everything about every single person all at the same time. All this, this is too, too wonderful for me. Um, verse five, verse five. It is, too, it is too high above me. I cannot, I cannot reach it. Verse seven. Where can I go from your, from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Even if we try and hide, even if we try and duck and dive, God, God knows where we, God knows where we are. He knows our address. He knows our telephone number. He knows where we are. He knows everything. Where can we hide? Where can we run? You know, some of us try and fool God and, and think God is fool. God is not a fool. God said, "I will not be mocked." You can't mock me. You can't take the mickey out of me. I already saw what you did before you even did it. God sees everything. So you can't come to God and say, oh, God, I didn't do this. God said, I saw when you did it. God, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I hide from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in, 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 in show, you are there the place of the dead. You are even there. You are there. If I take the wings of the morning and if I dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even, even those, even there, your hand will lead me and thy right hand will take hold of me. That means there's no hiding place. No, you can go to the bottom of the sea. You can go to the top of the mountain. You can go to the, the deepest valley. God is there. He knows where you are. He knows where you are. Hallelujah. Verse 11. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the night will be the only light around me. Even the darkness is... Is not too dark. <laughs> you who cannot conceal nothing from you. No matter how dark the night is, he can see through the darkness. He can see it. Nothing is too dark. He said he can see it all. Verse, verse 13. For you have formed my innermost parts. You have kept, you have knit me together in my mother's womb. Imagine that. God knows our innermost parts. He knows us. He, he was the one that knitted us together in our mother's womb. We thought it was our mother that, 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 <laughs> that gave birth to us. It wasn't our mother. Our mother was just the carrier. It was the Lord that was making all those little organs and making all those... Um, all knitting us together in our mother's womb, giving us that character, that personality. We thought it was our mother that gave birth to us. I'm sorry, it wasn't your mother. Your mother was just the carrier. God was the one that was uh, knitting us together in our mother's womb. And uh, I'm just going to stop right there because I think you get the gist right now. He knows everything about us. There's nowhere to hide. So I'm just going to say to God is a great, wonderful God. 
and there's nothing too hard for him to do. I just want to welcome all those that are just joining. I can see Alice. Alice come, is coming on from, I think you're from Kenya. Is that right, Alice? <laughs> Hello. Can I, can I just interject quickly and say this is our beautiful Alice, <laughs> who I've had the pleasure um, of working with. Um, she's, uh, she's a Maasai. <laughs> and uh, she was uh, very much involved in the choir or what God instituted Woo! in uh, Kenya, wow, what wow. God established in Kenya. And so I'm so glad that she's on today. She's one of the leading lights uh, of uh, the, the Maasai group. And she co we're continually in contact. Wow. Praise, praise be to God. And she's, as you can see, she's beautiful. Uh, oh, and I'm even saying that with Grace <laughs> beside me. <laughs> God, yeah, bless so um, bless you, Alice, for coming on. And I think uh, probably this is her third time um, that she's been on um, the platform, but we welcome her in Jesus' name. Go ahead. No, oh, carry on, carry on. <laughs> Hallelujah. So uh, welcome, Alice, and uh, I welcome everybody else. Um, welcome, Queen J, Jennifer. Bless you. Looking uh, great. Uh, <laughs> It's always nice to see people's faces, so I would encourage you, if you have a face, can you just show it, please? <laughs> and you know what? If that's the case, everybody should be showing their faces. But uh, bless you. It's, so, it's such a joy to see you in the flesh. Daniel, we welcome you. Um, is that uh, earmuffs or is that uh, speaker, speakers round? Or, oh, it's cushions for the neck. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, I got you. Bless you, Daniel. And... Uh, our heart goes out to you. Um, I sent you a message already to say that uh, one thing, and I thank God for your life that, you know, um, you were able to minister to your father. Yeah, granddad. Uh, sorry, your grandfather, uh, even in his, I think it was whether it's his well, 100th birthday or whatever, but you was able to minister to him. And so there's no time limit in terms of receiving God mm -hmm. and so uh, we thank God uh, for your father and that he's he may be absent granddad, granddad <laughs> is maybe absent from the body but he's present with the Lord right now and uh, we thank God that you was able to see him even in the hospital where you were you was able to see him and uh, I'm sure that you had words of encouragement and just to say this um, from what I understand he did not die in the hospital. He actually came out of the hospital. Yes. He was well. And, you know, but there's an appointed time for everybody. He was well. He came out. He was discharged from hospital. And, but God said, come on, come, come on, on home, son. He said, you're welcome. We're every, you're going to have a welcoming party. So just say bye and just come on home where you're going to be more at rest, you see. And so we know that he's in the presence of the Lord. So bless you. Daniel, you're looking strong, and I know that your grand uh, is a, it will be a tremendous loss to you. But uh, your loss is heaven's gain. Praise be to God. So I just pray God's strength over um, his uh, mother also, um, who has been uh, there um, assisting him and uh, just supporting him whilst he's rehabilitating. And so we thank God for Danielle, um, who's uh, not present at the moment, but trusting that she will be, be on later. But praise be to God. We welcome uh, Doris. Bless you again, Doris. And shortly back from, uh, from Uganda, we welcome you. And uh, thank God for the ongoing testimony. And I know that there's testimonies beyond testimonies that you've even... Uh, that the platform hasn't even heard her. So we thank God that God is continuing to work on your behalf and working in your favor. Praise be to God in favor of your family also. Um, Charmaine, bless you. Um, I know that uh, you're welcoming a week off from uh, <laughs> school, college, or uh, whatever the case might be, but I'm sure that you're welcoming that rest period anyway. And uh, so bless you, Charmaine. Mikkel, bless you. Um, not seeing you, uh, but uh, <laughs> knowing that God is still working in your favor. 
And so God, God is a faithful God. He's a gracious God. So every time I go along the line, I just see where God's favor is upon each and every one of you. So I can extol all the virtues of what God's doing in your lives. Praise be to God. So bless you, Mikael. I know that uh, God has uh, met you at the point of your need in so many different areas, and he continues to do so. Seema again, bless you. Welcome back. Um, God is continuing to bring increase to you and your family. Hector, bless you. So good to see you. Um, yes, um, there's a blessing on its way, and I won't say any more than that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Uh, Keith, we welcome you. Praise be to God. Thank you for the administration of music, uh, and uh, pray that God is continuing, continuing to bring increase to your life uh, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. And uh, I know that you've shared your testimony last week uh, of what God is doing. And Nisha, bless you, Nisha. Welcome. Um, haven't seen you for a little while, but I know that you're ever present. And praise be to God, you're in health um, and you're able to get out to work. What people don't know is that she was at home for a long time. and. Uh, but praise be to God, by the grace of God, she's up and she's well and she's back at work. And uh, thank God for your family and your and the, and the, your children. Praise be to God. And uh, so Maxine, Maxine just came, um, just slipped in. And uh, Maxine, <laughs> you are at the bottom right of my screen. Welcome, Maxine. I And I pray that God is continued to bring increase not only to you, but to your son uh, as well. And uh, you're, everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. And Bless you, Pastor Chris. Bless you, Pastor Grace. Bless oh, you. Maxine. And so we're so pleased and so glad that every, every one of you could take the opportunity to be here in the presence of Almighty God, just to receive today. And I'm sure, and I know that God will empower you to prosper in so many different ways. So bless you. Thank you. I'm just going to hand back to Grace. And uh... Oh, thank you. Oh, everybody is welcome. Everybody got a personal shout out. And I'm, gr I'm grateful to God. Guys, you guys are so special. And, um, and not only to us, but to God. We are the apple of his eye. Can you imagine? We are the apple of God's eye. Um, so we just thank God for today. I'm going to ask Keith to minister another worship uh, song for us and I want you to get ready if anybody's got a testimony you want to share after the song has been played um we're gonna give God a, a, a testimony to the goodness of God so get ready and to just share something what God has done for you we just want to be blessed and be encouraged when we hear testimonies it encourages us and we think wow if God can do that for you, he can do that for me. God is not partial. He will do what he does for others. He will do for you. So get ready to share a word of encouragement to your brothers and sisters. God bless you, Keith. Oh, oh thank God for that beautiful song. There's nobody greater, nobody, nobody more worthy of any praise than our Father. And uh, we're just going to give God a, a thanksgiving testimony where we're thankful to God of something that he's done for us amazing. And, uh, you know, if you want to share a, a, something that what God has done for you, I just want you to just uh, unmute right now. This is your opportunity to share and to bless us and for us to hear what God is doing in your life. We, we get so encouraged and we get so so empowered and we get so so strengthened when we think about how great God has been and uh, we just want to rejoice uh, with you and to the goodness of God so if you've got a testimony or a, a praise report or something you want to share um, this is your time now to, to share that so don't be shy <laughs> Okay, I'll share something. 
but there's a lot of noise going on in the background, so I don't know if that's... So I'll share anyway. I'll share. Yeah. Go on, yeah. Uh, in, in this uh, hospital, people play table tennis, right? And then I bought me in a wheelchair. I can play table tennis as well. So I went to play and I won. I actually won the, uh, the games. Uh, me in a wheelchair. <laughs> I actually won and they gave me a carrot cake. They gave me a carrot cake. So God favour. They, they gave me a carrot cake afterwards. And that was... And then I was playing the guitar as well. I could play the guitar. And then I managed to, I managed to tune in the guitar of this guy. And he said, wow, that's tuned in proper good. You know, how you tuned it in. So I managed to tune it in. So that's all the favour of God. So... That's my testimony, and hopefully I can get out of this place very soon, very soon because uh, I'm getting a headache. <laughs> I reject the headache in Jesus' name. In That's Jesus it. Name. Oh, thank you for sharing that, Daniel. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what, where we are. God is there. God is with you. He hasn't left you. He's still, even where you are in hospital. And for those of you who don't know, Daniel's in hospital and he's able to tune in. And uh, we just we're just glory, we're just grateful to God that you've got internet connection, that we can uh, pray, um, pray, and and that you can be um, uh, listening to the prayers, to the devotions, and everything. So Daniel, we want to give God thanks for your life, and uh, we want to pray that that headache will go. Sometimes it's not even your head. Sometimes it's just um the heaviness you know the heaviness that's in that um hospital we just want to come against that now so um, we're gonna pray for you daniel father i thank you for daniel's life father i thank you for the time that he spent in the hospital father he will have good good fond memories of being there father it's not been a depressing place but father we thank you that you've still given him joy you've still given him fun He's still given him people that he can interact with and, Father, be a blessing to. And, Father, I thank you that, Father God, nothing that you do is a mistake. And, Father, I thank you for this time of uh, rest for Daniel. Father, I pray that he will rest. And, Father, I thank you he will not be anxious for nothing. He will not be worried about anything. But, Father, help him to just relax. Help him to be calm. Father, knowing that God, even in the hospital, you are there with him. And Father, I pray against every spirit of heaviness and every antagonistic spirit and every demonic activity in that hospital that will might cause him a headache at this time. We break the bonds of that every spiritual wickedness in that, in that institution right now and every heaviness and every weariness. We come against every spirit of depression right now and every spirit of, of uh, mental illness right now we come against it now we come against yes, every in sickness, Jesus name. every infirmity in yes, daniel's in body Jesus father name. i pray that god you give him a sound mind right now even in the months of uh, months of chaos lord but father you've given him peace father you've given him calm you've given him strength father you calm in his nerves father calm in his behavior, Father, I thank you. It won't be for long that, Father, he will be discharged from this uh, hospital, Father. I pray right now that, Father, he would have been a blessing to many of the uh, pe uh, other patients that are there, Father. I thank you that your Holy Spirit will hover in that uh, hospital amongst every single staff member and every single um, patient, Father, that is in there, Father, that your glory will be uh, manifested to them, Father, even through Daniel as a point of contact, Father. We know that healing will come to the rest of the patients, Father. I speak life to Daniel and life to the other patients that are in that hospital. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind every sickness and every, every mind-binding spirit that will come and attack these patients, Father. We come against it now. We tear it down. And we plead the blood of Jesus over his life, Father. We thank you for his mom. And thank you that his mom is there to help come and help him. And Father, I thank you, even though this week he's had a loss, Father, his grandfather's gone to gone home to be with you. I thank you that God, that Father, we can celebrate his life. We can celebrate, Father God, a long life that you've given him, Father. Not only long life, but Father, you've given him um, a, a, a heavenly hope. Father, that he can enter into the gates of, of heaven. Father, I thank you for Daniel's life, that he's always a testimony. He's always a soul winner. You'll use him to reach out to the lost. And I thank you that that will increase on Daniel's life in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Amen. <coughs> amen. 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 Right, anybody else that has a testimony, feel free. Don't be shy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> After I just eulogize that, that um, how many of you have uh, overcoming testimonies? Um, I'm sure that uh, you you would like to share something in Jesus' name. You know, to God be the glory, great things he has done. And you know, the, we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And so we we give all glory to God. So if you've got something to share at this moment that will empower your brother or your sister, please feel free to do so. To God be the glory. Jennifer, Queen J, go ahead. <coughs> Good afternoon, kings and queens. I pray you all bless in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, my testimony is just that we, what, for the last about four weeks, I've been feeling pain in my body. Um, it's, they said it was, well, the doctor claimed it was, um, the Africa, but then it kind of moved to the groin area and to the back. Um, I find it difficult walking. I can't walk too far. I have to stop every so often when the, the pain is there, but it kind of gets more worse as I'm walking. But um, I have to give thanks, regardless of the pain, because I can still get out of my bed, I can still walk, I can still move, you know, I mean, I've been taking medication for the pain, but it hasn't been helping as far as I'm concerned, you know, it kind of just does it for a little while, but as for what the pain is and why it's there, I don't know. The doctors are doing tests on me and I'm just waiting on the results. I've um, also lost a lot of weight in the last, from June, July, or September. In the last four months, I've lost about seven stones in weight. I was a big chunky girl, now I'm a small, not so chunky, but wobbly girl now. Um, I'm still giving thanks that I am still here. Um, I'm going to say my health is good because I am here and moving. Pain is pain. We're all going to suffer some sort of pain. But it's how we deal with the pain that we're going to suffer. If it's a pain that you can bear, then you bear it and we give thanks. And if it's not a pain that you can't bear, then you still got to give thanks and you go to the right people to help you. But at the moment, I'm still giving thanks. Um, Every day is a blessing that I can get up. I give thanks for that. I give thanks to God for keeping me regardless in my right mind because sometimes when the pain gets to you, you feel like you're going out of your mind. But I, I'm still in my right mind. I give thanks. I feel like I can still move with the pain. I try and ignore it as much as I can, but I won't let the pain overcome me. I will let God overcome me. So um, regardless of what one go through on a day-to-day -day basis, I just feel that if you hold on to God, <clears throat> turn to him, give me your burdens, repent whatever you have may have not done or have done, and just ask him to keep you and strengthen you. I believe that all things are possible and it is possible with God. Regardless of our situation, we do have good times and we do have bad times, but um, when there is life, we are blessed. We are more blessed, we have more blessings than what we can even count. So um, I just want to encourage anybody and everyone that um, hold on to God, no matter what you're going through, whether it's painful or not painful, like Dan has lost his, um, his grandfather. I know he's still holding on and he still has the strength to lift up God in in what he's going through. So um, my encouragement is hold on, don't let go. God is always there with us. He knows and he sees. Amen. So God
God bless you all. That's my testimony. Oh, bless you, Queen J. Such a uh, such a joy to hear that testimony. Um, we know in all things we give thanks to God, in spite of whatever we're going through. And and, and like you said, you know, sometimes you're in excruciating pain, and it's not easy. And um, you know, you you said that you're going through tests, and uh, they don't know uh, what this what what the results are yet. But you know what? I'm just going to ask Pastor Krista lift you up before the Father and speak help to every part of your body and um, and obviously um, it's the doctors do not have the final say they might have be able to diagnose uh, what, what what the symptoms are what the where the pain where the issues are coming from but at the end of the day Dr. Jesus is the one that will minister to that area, to that area of infirmity, because we know sickness is an infirmity of the body. So we're going to ask Pastor Chris to pray for you, because in times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need a healer. We need a deliverer. We can call upon him at any time. Amen. And he's never too busy. So we're going to call on him right now on, on your behalf. And I just want all of us to just join our hearts in the prayer of agreement. She, uh, Jennifer said that she's lost so much weight, and she has. She's lost about seven stone. That is that is not, uh, uh, that's a lot of weight. She's lost half her body weight. That's a lot of um, stones. So we're just going to come against whatever spirit of infirmity that's attacking her body. And, and we thank God you're in, the, in your right mind because the enemy tried to uh, sometimes attack us in every area of our life. But you know what? To God be the glory, you're still standing, but for the grace of God. So we're going to lift up Jennifer, Queen J. Amen and amen. I just want you to, as we're praying, as I'm praying, just say, I receive it. I receive that healing right now in Jesus' now, in Jesus' name. Now is the appointed time. Now is the day of salvation. And that word salvation comes from the Greek word um, satiria, which means deliverance. It means healing. It means wholeness. And it means completeness. And it talks about prospering in any every area of your being. And so we're, you're just going to decree that over yourself. Jennifer, as uh, we just pray right now in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we mm -hmm. thank you. I thank you Jesus. for Jennifer right now, Jesus. Queen J. Mm -hmm. Father, you know her by name, you know her by nature. You know Jesus. the very thing that she's suffering in her body. Father, mm -hmm. it's unexplained right now. She has not received the doctor's report. But Father, you, your son, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, Jesus. came as the great mm -hmm. physician. And so, Father, we know that by the stripes of Jesus, Jesus she was healed, healed 2,000 healed years ago. 2,000 years ago. So we yeah. count those things that be not yeah. as though they are. Yeah. Father, a yeah. healing has already yeah. been administered yeah. to a yeah. physical body, yes, spirit, soul, and body yes. right yes. now. Yeah. And so I speak to that in spirit of infirmity, mm -hmm. I command you to loose yes. and let go of her body mm -hmm. from the crown of her head to the sole Jesus. of her feet. Saturate Jesus. right now Jesus. every tissue, every cell, every organ, every bone and every marrow where she's experiencing that pain and that symptom, that yes. debilitating symptom right now, condition that's seemingly giving rise to weight loss right now, rapid weight loss. I, I speak to it right now Jesus. and I command you to loosen, let go of her body. Now. I drive you out right now, now, now. in Jesus' now. name. Jesus. And Father, I thank you for your mm. efficacious all cleansing blood that flows through every vein, every artery in her body and brings about re- generation re-energization right now empowerment right now father right now raise her up in invigorator right now with almighty strength from on high 
In Jesus' mighty name, we speak to it. And Father, we decree and declare a good report, right, yes. Father, right now. Yes, Even Lord. as she might receive that report, Father, mm. I pray when she goes back, she will receive a good report, yes, a Lord. clearance yes, that everything Lord. is all right. Everything Jesus. is cleared right Lord. now in the name of now, Jesus. We Jesus stand name. in agreement, Father yes. God. We stand in a gap for her. Jesus. And Father, we decree it a whole in Jesus' Jesus. mighty name. name. In Jesus' mighty name, Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every sickness shall bow. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Just receive it in Jesus' name. Just receive it in Jesus' name. Receive that healing right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for it's not by might. It's not by our power, but it's by your Holy Spirit. And so, Father, we declare it done to your honor and to your glory and to your praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So be it in Jesus' mighty name. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Jennifer, I just want you to keep strong, keep courage, keep standing. God is with you and God is for you. And the back of that infirmity has been broken. And that every chain of, of, of uh, attack on your body has been destroyed because of the blood of Jesus. We put a hedge of protection around you with the blood of Jesus. And we declare that you are healed today by the stripes of Jesus. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare it and decree it now for God's glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know if anybody else wants to share <clears throat> um, anything else, but if not, we're going to uh, ask Pastor Chris to to share what um, God has laid upon his heart today. Um, but this is your last opportunity. Yeah? I don't know, Alice, if you want to say hi to us. <laughs> Just want to say a, a hello. Okay. If not, then, yeah, God bless you. And uh, um, over to you, Pastor Chris. Praise be to God. Alice, I know you're not shy. <laughs> <laughs> She's not shy. <laughs> uh, praise be to God. When you're ready, Alice, praise be to God. I thank God. I thank God because we serve a mighty, great God. He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. He knows everything about us. He knows every thought that goes through our heart and then through our minds. He knows where we're going, where our destination is. He knows where we're coming from. Hallelujah. He knows that is he knows that he's given every provision for us for, to receive the very best from him. He knows that. God knows that. Mm -hmm. His desire is to give us his best, his very best. And uh, you know, even when you when you um, look into that scripture, and it says, "Without faith, it is impossible to please God." For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. He is what he says he is, and he, he can do what he says he can do. But he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He's a rewarder. God wants us to diligently seek him, so he can bountifully reward us or lavishly reward us in whatever area of life that's the god that we serve he desires to give us more than we expect and so i pray that every one of you will be expectant this afternoon and um i've got a word um and uh it it's it just speaks of um how how God sees us from his perspective. In, in other words, it, sh it shows how God would look down at us, uh, or shall I say, look, I would um, assess us. And so 
from a human perspective, how we um, assess one another, how we um, affirm one another. It's not the way God affirms us. <coughs> and uh, so <laughs> I, I, I would, I'm just going to pray God's uh, direction as I speak today. And I just pray that you will just receive of God because this, this message is for every single person. And um, I just really want you to recognize that <coughs> with God, it's the least that shall be the greatest. Let me just say that again. The least shall be the greatest. Praise be to God. So Heavenly Father, just thank you right now as um, I prepare to speak, Lord, that every word that goes forth, you are affirm and confirm with signs following. And Father, that it will register deep in the hearts of every person in the hearing of your voice right now, that it will empower them for service, Father God. They will, they will be mindful of what you desire in them. And so, Father, I pray that by your Holy Spirit, you will move upon their hearts and their minds. You have your own way. And I pray that as they hear, they will also listen. And as they listen, they will glisten. In other words, they will grow exponentially according to the revelation that they receive in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise be to God. So I was, um, I was just thinking that, uh, I'm forever thinking that how the world assesses us is not the way God sees us. And uh, that we have a responsibility, each and every one of us has a responsibility, in, in, irrespective of what condition you find yourself to be a vessel of God, uh, a vessel of honor as unto God, an instrument of his love. And in other words, a, a container of his kingdom, the kingdom of God, an exponent of the kingdom of God. In other words, you're able to release the character, the nature, the authority, and the power of God here on this earth, not because of your own ability or how great you think you are uh, what your qualifications is qualifications are but because of your humility and your total surrender to God that God will then elevate you into all that he has assigned and created you to be and the sign of greatness is humility humility and um, so I, I just really want to um, want you to turn with me to First Timothy, and um, I'm going to read from First Timothy, First Timothy cha chapter eight. Uh, sorry, First Timothy four and verse eight, and it says this. For physical training is of some value, but godliness, spiritual trainer, training, is of value in everything and in every way, since it holds promise for the present life and for the life to come. And this is a faithful and trustworthy saying, trustworthy, and this is a, a faithful and trustworthy saying, worthy of full acceptance and approval. Let me just park there for a second and just say, you know, in the natural, um, it's interesting that I was listening to a program the other day and it was talking about uh, how we perceive one another. And uh, a lot, and in men, there seems to be a sense of such competition at, at a certain, within a certain age group, there's competition. And there's a sense of envy and sometimes jealousy. And, and what it is, um, they were talking about um, the pressure that they're under. 
to look a certain way. And I said this within a certain age group. And certainly with me, it doesn't bother how it doesn't worry me how I look in that respect. But it's a sense of um, being toned, you see, being honed, um, having that V shape, looking like an Adonis. I mean, it looking like beefed up like a beefcake and all that type of thing. And so, um, <laughs> you know, uh, I've seen where even my children have gone through that phase of uh, signing up to the gym and they're in the gym for hours on end trying to tone those muscles and everything else. I remember my uh, one of my sons, uh, he was very, very over, overly committed to that. And uh, he had the size, but at the same set, set time, he had the muscle as well. And it's like, whoa, Marvin. Well, I won't say his name, but it's like, whoa. <laughs> how far are you going with this? And, uh, you know, it, it, it was a sense of I'm going to tone and hone my body. And my other son, he went through the same thing. But it, it's a certain age group. And they were set, and on this program, we, they had a panel there and they were saying the pressure of it. But the reality is this. They said um, one of the things they said that they achieved it. But even saying that when they arrived at that place where they had the. Uh, um, what is what they call it? A six pack. Uh, a six pack. I was almost going to call it an eight pack, but uh, I was trying to count how many ribs they had, ripples they had <laughs> across them. But they had a, like they have a six pack, and they said, you know what it is? Is that when you come into an environment with men, and they might show it off and everything, but afterwards they go away, and they forget. The, the importance of doing all that is minimal at the end of the day because it's not that they, they're going to lose sleep or they're going to dream about you or whatever. It's just that one, it's, one, it's a thing that you just show off and then after you show it off, it's soon forgotten because you forget the image. And they said they would do, go to such lengths to um, show off and at the end of the day, it didn't amount to anything. It never really gave them true self-esteem. It made them feel superficially good within themselves, but it never gave them the satisfaction or it never, it never fulfilled that void in their life because it was a temporary thing. And, um, and so when you look at this scripture, it says for physical training of, is of some value, but God, godliness, spiritual training is of, value in every in everything and in every way since it holds promise for present life and for life to come and the most important thing about our lives is this is that whatever we should do we should spiritually train ourselves to be all that god is to be all that christ is because the image that God has of us is that we're created in his image. So when he sees us, especially from a born again perspective, he sees a, a brand spanking new image. That old image has been taken away and a new image has been supplanted in us. So we're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation all things have passed away behold all things become new so the image that god has of us is is the image that he has of his son jesus christ so he sees the potential in us based on the fact that the holy spirit dwells in us by virtue that the holy spirit which is an expression of the godhead dwells on the inside of us. So he sees greatness in each and every one of us. And so what does what is God saying here? He's saying that it's a spiritual training that has ramifications that will ripple for eternity. In other words, it will resonate into eternity, eternal life, everlasting life. It will, it will, whatever physical exercise, whatever thing you do in the natural, it's only temporal, but it's the, it's the things that you can't see that are eternal. And the things that you will exercise in your spirit, man, 
Those are the things that are long lasting with God. Those are the things that God truly values. The, uh, the a replication of his character and his nature. That's what is of value. That's what seals you for eternity. And so what is spiritual training? You can say spiritual training could be time spent in the presence of God. Not time spent in a gym um, pushing weights, but time spent praying, meditating on the word, studying the word, but more so exercising what God has given you. Whatever ability God has given you, it's a matter of exercising it, um, honing your skills or your ability, honing the abilities that has been given you by the Holy Spirit. And you might say, what do you mean? In simplicity, you, each and every one of you has been given a ministry of reconciliation. That's a matter of bringing bringing men, leading men to God himself. That's a ministry of reconciliation. It's a service to bring man, man, mankind into the kingdom. And so by virtue of that, what you're actually doing is saying, you know what, God, I recognize that I have a gift, or you might not recognize that you have an ability, but there's something that you gravitate to. Some, and uh, there's an ability. There might even be a, a, a spiritual ability, but it might be a, a physical ability. But from God's perspective, because he's the one that has given you that gift, you can use that gift so that he can be glorified. So there can be a, a, a supernatural anointing upon that gift that will manifest supernaturally so that in the eyes of man, they just say, whoa. And uh, it's like, um, you know what? Uh, 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 and I'm just going to say this in short. I, just, I watched the voice uh, yesterday and there were two people on there. And uh, two people, and it, it's fascinating that the two people had what my, one might say a, a, a sort of a, a church background. In other words, they a church influence, a gospel influence. They were singing. And uh, even the panelists recognized there's something about gospel, the way they sang. It touched my soul. It touched my spirit. Mm. It registered on the inside of them. that They couldn't even shake it off. <laughs> so they wasn't looking at the professionalism, so to speak, but it was the... the the connection in the spirit, it ministered to them on a spiritual, and to the point that both of them, the both women that sang, they don't even know how good they are because they're so humble and they're, they're thinking, oh, they're so shy and, and, and inward looking that they didn't know, I, I'm, I, I'm saying to you, and I, I, I can confess that Grace was downstairs, I was upstairs and I came downstairs and I said to Grace, and Grace said, I said, did you, did you see what went on? And Grace said, yes. I, um, I cried when I heard the singing. And I, I confess, I said the same thing. I said, Grace, I cried when I heard the singing because it ministered to my spirit. There was an anointing upon it. And you might say, well, they just sang. No, I believe because, and they, they were singing a gospel song, uh, where something that ministered in terms of the soul, and, and it was a gospel song. And I'm, I'm just bringing it down simply to say to you, whatever you think you have or don't have, every gift, good gifts, comes from the Father of light, from which there is no shadow of turning. Anything good that you have, God can use it, because good becomes God. Your good becomes God. And so you, it might be even a natural gift and you might look at it and thinking, I can't do anything with this. But you gravitate to it naturally. But I'm saying you can use it to the glory of God. And I can testify of that. I can testify of that. My dear sister, Alice, um, who was here, she's not here anymore, but 
even going to minister to the Maasai, even going to minister that I can testify that the gift that you have, what, first and foremost, I'm not going to go too, too, too deep into it, but the gift, even to draw, enabled me to go to the, um, the Maasai, reach out to them. The gift of creativity, art, artistry, artwork, fine art, enabled me to go to reach out to the Maasai people. Then having arrived there, the other gifts came into play, unbeknown to me, because I wasn't going to do anything except just be a blessing. But the reality is this, is that, and I've often, I've said this in my testimony, I share this testimony with you, is that before I got saved, I used to dance. And this might help somebody. I used to dance. And I used to dance very well. And locally, I was the, one of the best dancers in my particular um, area. But when I came to Christ, because that dancing became to me like a God, I worship my dancing. It, 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 um, it testified of who I was at that time. And so I was being celebrated through my dance. When I went to, uh, when I was at, in, in school, I was celebrated. When I went out to the clubs, I was celebrated. And so, you know, sometimes you love and you can appreciate, you love ad adulation and appreciation and it can get to you. But when I received Christ into my life, you know, the Holy Spirit said to me, that's the first thing you're going to drop. Now, he said it to me. I'm not talking about any. He said it to me. And I knew because that my dancing was an idol to me. It was an idol. And as I said, I was celebrated. Now, the thing is, is this, is I grew up in a, in a, in a sort of Pentecostal church that in a Pentecostal church, they do things religiously. And so if they're dancing, if the Holy Spirit touches them, they're dancing a certain way. And so they might skittle out a few cheers. In other words, cheers would be broken in the midst of that service just because of the way they danced. They hopped, they jumped, they skipped, and they crushed cheers at the same time. And I thought, God is not telling me to do that. So when the Spirit of God would move me, I could only respond the only way I knew to respond. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I, I remember, <laughs> sorry, I have to laugh because I remember a whole, uh, a, a mother of the church. Let me just say a mother of the church. She just looked at me and she said, she looked at me. And this is genuine. This is genuine. The Holy Spirit was touching me. And I don't know, I was moving a certain way. And they said, and she just said to me, Brother Brown, <laughs> we don't do that in here, you know. <laughs> so you know what that did? That just crushed me and squashed me. I, I never moved again. And I thought, you know what? I don't know if I can ever dance again in that respect. <laughs> And uh, the reality is this, is that in years to come, uh, as time evolved, I saw people on the television and they were um, like, whether it was theater or whether it was acting or whether it was gospel or whether it was um, an expression of dance, I saw people ministering in dance. I thought, hey, look at that. By that time, I'm now counting my years. I'm thinking, oh, that, that's behind me. But God has a way. God has a way. And uh, what happened is that I would see these dance groups or dancers ministering. And today you will see them with the flags and 
you see them in different outfits, changing into different outfits. But the, what they're doing, they're acting out themes. I'm thinking, oh, isn't that amazing? But even as they're dancing, I could feel and sense the anointing upon their dance, even to the point where they would um, have altar calls after this administration. And after this administration, many souls would come to the front and they'd give their hearts to the Lord. And even through the administration, people would testify of being healed, set free and delivered. And I thought to myself, God, you can use us anyway and anyhow. And that was a revelation for me. And I thought to myself, all them years, I, I was squashed. You know what happened? And this is God. What happened is that when I went to Kenya and uh, God, this is God and it's got nothing. I never thought about a choir. I never thought about uh, anything creative. I was more in the line of education at that time. But God would have it that the, 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 um, the people that I should reach out to were people, the Maasai people who were gifted in song and in dance. I thought, isn't that something? <laughs> And so here it is now, this was an opportunity for me to be a blessing to them so that through me, God could now bless and empower a tribe because that to them was natural. And I don't know if you see the Maasai people um, dancing, but they had a particular type of dance. I thought, and it's so infectious when you look at it. But it was also their singing. And what happened is that, and I just, let me just a long, cut a long story short. What happened is that God, God enabled me to harness a group of Maasai, um, psalmists, dancers. They were gifted in great actors. They were gifted in many in the they were gifted in the arts. And what God enabled me to do, because I was not dancing myself, but I was able to train them and guide them and steer them. And even God anointed me to finance, or should I say, God supplied the finance so that I could get the best of the best trainers tutors for them whether it be in singing or in instrument playing and so within a short period of time this group was so finely tuned that we god said it's time to release them and so when we <laughs> i said okay as a group and this is a group that came out of thousands of people that would have being introduced to the ministry and they wanted to be a part of what God was doing at that time. And because of what I was able to share in terms of the gift, I, I often say to Grace, I say this to Grace, and I, I said it to her yesterday, I said, you know what? I know every person that's gonna go, that they're gonna choose the, 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 um, the, the what do they call them? the judges they're going to choose. And, and there's that sense of knowing what is good and what is not so good. And so what happened with these Maasai people, they were chosen out of many and to a group of about 20. And these groups, and I just we just introduced them to local um, churches and they, they ministered there and then the bigger churches, these are, have thousands and thousands of members in, they wanted them to minister in their churches and they wanted them to minister in crusades where there's tens of thousands. And so they led worship, they led praise and worship and through them, not through me, I wasn't dancing, through them, through their administration, through their singing, through their worship, 
God would use them. It, God, I say God would take the foolish things of this world to confound the world wise, but with their gifting, God would anoint their gifting to bring glory to him. And so many people got healed, set free and delivered through their administration to the point where even pastors were saying, I've never ever seen anything like this in my life. Never, this is a miracle. Of truth, it was a miracle mm. because <laughs> it had never happened before. And I'm saying to you, whatever, and this, this is not totally what I was gonna share today, but I'm just saying to you, whatever you feel that you have, when you commit it wholly and solely to God, nothing is wasted with God. Mm. No experience that you have is wasted with God no gift that you have is wasted with God if you commit that gift to God if you spiritually exercise your gift God will elevate that gift and it will bring glory to him and it will advance his kingdom and this is why I always say that you have to be kingdom minded kingdom minded means that whatever you're doing have a focus on the kingdom. How is it going to reach and touch people that they will be touched to the point of giving their lives to Christ? Salvation is the greatest miracle that anybody would receive. The salvation of their soul. How is it going to minister? How is it going to be a witness of Christ? That's the most important thing. And so even today, I've harnessed that. And I said, whatever I do, I've got to be mindful. Whatever I'm doing is kingdom minded. You have to be, you have to think like that. This is not, it is not about yourself. But let me just continue to read this. It's uh, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 8. And this, this, Lots of things I can say in this, but I've seen where God has taken people from the interior, from the backside of, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't even say the desert, but taken them from the remotest areas and God has elevated people. I will never know the extent and the influence that I had on that tribe by virtue of what God did through me. I was only a point of contact. But what I would say is that every vision God gives you, he will make provision for you. Because I was, the, the ministry that reached out to the mass, I was able to do, I was able to do anything I wanted to do. And God made supernatural provision for it. Miracles upon miracles upon miracles and this and i'm going to say this the maasai people they're not the richest <laughs> tribe in kenya the one thing they was able to bless me with that i couldn't accept ultimately was land they had they got land they blessed me with so much land that i said i couldn't take it i had to give it back acres and acres of land and that was because because they were so blessed by the administration and the, and and just the grace of god upon their lives that they felt it i i just want to look i'm just saying this to you exercise your spiritual gifts whatever you have that even if you look at it as just being a natural thing, allow God to superimpose is super on your natural so it becomes supernatural. Whatever you think is ordinary about you, but it's something that is distinctive to you. Commit your ordinary to God and it will become extraordinary. Don't do it in your own strength. The less of you, is the more of Christ. The less of you is the more of Christ. 
I was only a facilitator and I continue to be so. Only a facilitator. That's why I will have a platform like this and you will not see me because it's not about me. It's about empowering each and every one of you to be all that God has created you to be. You are created for a divine purpose in God. And it's important that you realize that you're special. Every one of you, it doesn't matter how, whether you're qualified or unqualified, every person has something good about them that you can present to God as an offering to God and God will use that. So let me read again. For physical training is, um, so 1 Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 8, for physical training is of some value, but godliness, spiritual training, is of value in everything and in every way, since it holds promise of the present life and for the life to come. This is a faithful and trustworthy saying, worthy of full acceptance and approval. It is for this that we labor and strive often called to and often called to account because we have fixed our confident hope on the living god who is the savior of all people especially of those who believe in him recognize him as the son of god and accept him as savior and lord hallelujah Keep commanding and te teaching these things. And it says here, let no one look down on you because of your youth. And I, when, I say, when I say youth, I'm going to say youth from a perspective, not only your age, but in terms of your age spiritually, in terms of when you, when you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. Because people will look at you and say, well, you ain't been anywhere. You ain't done anything. You ain't experience anything so what can you give let me tell you something god when god looks at an individual in the realm of the spirit he doesn't see age he sees his spirit in the person and so when even jesus christ declares these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they, do, they shall drink any diddly thing, and it shall not hurt them. So they shall lay, take up serpents, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That is to those that believe. It has no age limit. It's not a U. It's not a double X or whatever, triple X. It's, there's no age limit. It's for any and every person that will believe. I've seen God use children to administer his grace. God can use anybody. And so he says here, let no one look down on you because of your youth, but be an example and set a pattern for the believers in speech and in conduct, in love, in faith, and in moral purity. Until I come, Devote yourself to public reading of scripture, to preaching and to teaching, and to the sound doctrine of God's word. That's foundational. Whatever you do, make your foundation be the word of God, in other words. Let it be the word of God. Let it be your fellowship and your devotion to the Lord. How much time do you devote to the Lord? Is it just when you come on the platform or is there time outside of that that you devote to your Lord? All that weighs heavily, counts for a lot in the realm of the spirit, in the heavenly realm, because as you exercise yourself, remember this, the word of God is like food. It's like food. As in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. You can eat bread in the physical and it will do some good to you but if you eat the bread jesus being the 
symbol of that bread, the word, if you eat the word, then you will spiritually grow exponentially. You will grow. Where you pray, you will grow. Where you communicate with the Father, you will grow. Where you're in his presence, you will grow. Where you devote your life to him, first and foremost, you will grow spiritually. It's, that's what it's talking about. Do not neglect the spiritual gift within you. That special endowment, which was intentionally bestowed on you by the Holy Spirit. And this is speaking about Timothy and directly who, who received his gift through transference. It was spoken prophes prophetically given to him. But there's a gift that is given to each and every one of you. And that's a gift that comes from God, the Father, a good gift where there's no shadow of turning. But within that gift, there is the ability for God to anoint that gift. So it performs extraordinary, beyond the ordinary. In other words, it's not natural. And that's the important thing. You have to believe that God can do things through you that, that is beyond your natural ability. As much as I can draw and create, I don't rely on that. You know what? Every time God has done something in my life, it's always been supernatural because I come to the end of myself. I don't know how to do it. But I will just do what I can do, and then God does the rest. He orchestrates. He orders my footsteps. And that's the same way. When you give your gift back to God, he will order your footsteps. He will not frustrate you in that area. He cannot frustrate you because he's giving you that gift. Just like, he, just like the, um, the parables of the talents, he will give you that gift so that it brings increase. Every gift that you have is to bring increase so that the master may be pleased with you. Hallelujah. So it says, do not neglect spiritual gift within you, that special endowment which was intentionally bestowed on you by the Holy Spirit through prophetic utterance when the elders laid their hands on you at your ordination. It doesn't say that in the King James, but it says it in the Amplified. Practice and work hard at these things. Practice. Practice. Even in the world, they practice. If they're good at, gifted at something, it's, it's not necessarily that they're doing it unto God. But if they're good at something, what they do is practice. They practice their skills. Some people, have, they're very, very gifted, but they never practice what they have. They never work hard at it to refine their skills. And so what happens? Their gift is seemingly wasted. Many go return to the grave with all their gifts with them. They never emptied themselves when they, when they passed on. They, everything went to the grave with them. Don't be like them. Exercise what you have, practice and work hard on these things. Be absorbed in them, completely occupied in your ministry. So your gift becomes a ministry, a service as unto God. So when I don't care what you do, you can, it can be a blessing. It can advance God's kingdom. Because you know what? God gave it to you. So what? So you can just heap it up on yourself and just benefit personally. No. So that he can be glorified. He can be lifted up. He can be exalted. It says, um, practice and work hard at these things. Be absorbed in them. Completely occupied in your ministry, in your service, so that your progress will be evident to all. So your progress will be evident to all. Not you hiding. Don't hide your bushel. Don't hide your light under a bushel. Let it be evident to God so that men may see your good works and come to glorify the Father. 
who is in heaven. Glorify the Father. It's important. It's important. And it says, pay close attention to yourselves. Concentrate on your personal development and to your teaching. Persevere in these things. Hold to them. For as you do this, you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you, for those who see you, for those who see the manifestation of your gifts in their life. You don't know. You're directing them to the Father. That's the ministry of reconciliation. You're drawing them to the Father. You're leading them to the Father. Because everything you do now, you testify to the glory of God. It's not me, it's God. It's by the grace of God. God loves that. And the more you extol his virtues, the more he's going to give you. Is The more he's going to give you. Praise be to God. There's another um, scripture that I just want to turn to quickly. And um, I may not have the chance to share all of it. But here it is. It says, Luke um, 9 and verse 46. An argument. And I'm reading from the Amplified. Luke 9, 46. And it says, an argument started amongst them as to which of them might be the greatest the greatest. I know Ali said I'm the greatest, but it was far from the greatest. I'm sorry. Humility makes you great, not boasting. Argument started amongst them as to which of them might be the greatest, surpassing the others in esteem and authority. See, we count greatness is as in terms of esteem. How do people esteem us? Uh, our great, our popularity. We see greatness from a human perspective, but it's not the same from a God perspective. But Jesus, knowing what they were thinking in their heart, took a child and had him stand beside him. And he told them, whosoever welcomes this child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me also welcomes him who sent me. For the one who is least among all of you, that is the one who is genuinely humble, the one with a realistic self-view, in other words, he is not uppity, he's not pious, he's not snorty, he's not proud. Uh, the one who has a realistic self-view he is the one who is truly great. You see how God sees it. So the world will put all these people on a pedestal, the, whether they're actors or, you know, something. <laughs> I'm just going to quote someone. Anybody that's on the television, they're famous. And you esteem them because they're on television. That, that, that's not a qualification of greatness, going on telly. You can go on telly because you're notorious. In other words, you're doing something that is not right. That doesn't make you great. What's great is when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that he will exalt you in due season. He will elevate your gift. And John replied, Master, we saw someone driving out demons in your name. <laughs> and we tried to stop him because he does not follow along with us. You see, Jesus, how Jesus is, is, see, you can't put every single person in a box because every person is an individual. You know what it is? These, that person or these people may have seen Jesus ministering to the sick, seeing how people were healed, how they were delivered of demon, demons. And they thought, you know what? And they may have sat under his word, received the teaching. They may have received revelation 
concerning what God, Jesus was teaching. And they said, you know what? If Jesus says I can do it, I can do it. And they would have gone out there and did it. The, the disciples were incensed because they weren't doing it the way they were doing it. Isn't it like the church today? If they don't do it our way, we think, no, nah, I can't have fellowship with them. No, nah, they're doing it wrong. No, no, no. I'm not going to accept. I'm not going to embrace that. You don't know what's in the person's heart. You don't, it, see, in life, it's not about style. God, God, God doesn't call the church to style. He calls them to love, not to style and fashion or group or cliques. He doesn't call us to that. He calls us as a body of Christ. So we can be blessing one to another first and then be a, then be a blessing to the world. So here it is. John, um, John replies in context of what Jesus is saying and says, Master, we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he does not follow along with us. In other words, he wasn't part of the 12. <laughs> he wasn't part of the group. But Jesus told him, do not stop him. Do not stop him. In other words, don't, don't highlight him. Don't judge him. Don't stop him. For he who is not against you is for you. He's not against you. He's for you. So how are you stopping him? Ah, it says so much here. It <laughs> says so much. <laughs> you know, there's another place. And he says, um, um, we're still there. And let me just read on. And he says, now when the time was approaching, verse 51, Approaching for him to be taken up to heaven, he was determined to go to Jerusalem to fulfill his purpose. He sent messengers on ahead of him, and they went into Samaritan village to make arrangement for him. But the people would not welcome him because he was traveling towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and destroy them? What did Jesus say? But he turned, Jesus turned and rebuked them. And he said, you do not know what kind of spirit you have. <laughs> you're you're going to write off the people. Just You're going to write them off because they don't yield to your way of doing things. Because they didn't welcome you. You're just going to write them off. That's not the heart of the father. He wishes that none should perish, but all should come to repent. In other words, he comes to a point where he says, you know what? I want everybody to be like me. And so he's not looking at, at this one offense. And he's saying, no, I can't use that person. No, I can't re receive that. No. In other words, he's not saying, I'm going to shoot them down. You don't shoot anybody down. And he says, um, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's life, but to save them, to empower them, to heal them, to restore them, to complete them. And they journeyed on to another village. That's the gospel. That's the kingdom. It's all about increase. So <laughs> it's all about increase. Praise be to God. And you know that the, and then you go on to chapter 10 and it talks about Jesus selecting 70, 70 other um, disciples. So this wasn't the inner group of 12. This is another 70. And again, I love the principle of the Godhead. Less is more. Less is more. In other words, when he's, he's, he's <laughs> now this, the Lord appointed 70 others. Um, Luke 10, verse 1, appointed 70 others and sent them out ahead of him, two by two, into every city and place where he was about to go. And he was saying to them, this is 70. The harvest is abundant for th there are many who need to hear the good news about salvation. How are they going to hear the good news about salvation through you? 
It may be through your gifting. It may be through your abilities. He's saying unto them, the harvest is abundant, but there are many who need to hear the good news about salvation. But the workers, those available to proclaim the message of salvation are few. Therefore, prayerfully ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers to the harvest. And so what he's saying here is, yes, go your way, listen carefully. I am sending you out like lambs amongst the wolves. You know, Jesus, he's sending them out like lambs amongst the wolves. You would have thought he'd send them out amongst the sheep. He's, what I'm saying to you is that it doesn't matter how extreme the situation is. Whatever God has given you, it doesn't matter about the opposition out there. He will send you out and he will equip you and he will anoint you even as he has appointed you for, for, to fulfill the task that he has sent you to do. You have a commission in this earth, every one of you. You have a commission to do the Lord's work. And he's giving you gifts and he's saying, I'm going to send you. In other words, you will, you will get opposition. There will be people that will not always uh, agree with you. They will not always uh, embrace you. But I'm sending you out, but I'm also <coughs> equipping you. But he's equipping him. How does he equip us? Go your way. Listen carefully. I'm sending you out like lambs amongst the wolves. Do not carry a money belt. What are you talking about? I need some security. I need some money before I can do what I'm doing. No, you don't. All you need is availability to do what God instructs you to do. I am telling you, when God, when anything God has called me to that is supernatural, I have not had any money. I have not had a penny. But God supernaturally opens up the door so that I can walk through. It's called divine favor. Because it's as unto God and God is glorified because when I stand up there, I can't say, you know what I've done. You know, oh God, I was so gifted. They just, they were swooning over me. They were, their, their, lip, their mouths were running. No, I can't say that. All I can do is give God the glory. And what Jesus, see, I'm sharing a principle of God, how God sees things, not how humans see it. Because God sees it totally different from man. Because man wants everything. He wants the security of everything before he can move off and do something. Even when he's got everything he needs, he still wants more. But he says, go your way. Listen carefully. I'm sending you out like lambs amongst the world. Do not carry a money belt, a provision bag, or extra sandals. And do not greet anyone on the way who would delay you. No money belt, no overnight bag. In other words, duffel bag with uh, clothes in there. Nothing, no sandals. Jesus, the son of God is sending his disciples out like that. What do you think that is? So none of them can be exalted in their own selves. None of them can be lifted up in pride. So that they would give all the glory to God. How is that? So when that God sends them out now and he gives them instruction. Um, verse 9. He says. And heal those. He says when you go. Verse 8. When you go into a city. And they welcome you. Eat what is set before you. And heal those in it who are sick. Authenticating your message. What's your message? Your gospel message. Your the message of good news and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Praise be to God. And you know what he says in um, verse 17? I'm just going to jump down to verse 17. He says, the 70 returned with joy. Saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. They were given delegated authority. They weren't born again Christians. They were given delegated authority. We are born again. We have the spirit of God residing in us. And he said to them, 
the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. Listen carefully. I have given you authority that you now possess to dread, tread on serpents and on scorpions, any demonic activity and the ability to exercise authority over all power of the enemy, Satan, and nothing will in any way hurt you. Nevertheless, nevertheless so he's saying, don't mind what you're doing. Don't, don't, don't mind it. One thing. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. So it's still about obedience. It's still about obedience. And so I, I just felt like I just need to just share that with you. Least little is more. The less of you, the more of Christ. Less is more. The less of you, the more of Christ. Humility is about looking at yourself from a sober perspective, not thinking of yourself more highly than you ought to. Knowing that you, God, has given to everyone the measure of faith. The measure of faith comes through a gifting that you have. It's a natural, it may be a natural gifting, as I said, but it's a measure. You're not all called to do the same things, but there's something innate to you that God wants you to use that as a point of contact so that he may be glorified. And that's the most important thing. And it's about. It's not, it's not saying I ain't got nothing. There's nothing. There's, I, ain't got, I ain't got no skill. I ain't got nothing. Let me say something to you. Moses said, I can't talk. Blah, 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 blah. I can't talk. He said, don't mind that. I created those that are dumb and are blind, and are lame. In other words, it doesn't matter what your inability is. God can still use you for his glory and that's the most important thing it doesn't matter and one thing people are embracing i see people embracing now is that people with um disabilities you're seeing them more um in the forefront of things in other words you're seeing them more on television you're seeing them more in everyday environment they even even the world is embracing disability how much more the body of christ but we, we should embrace one another. We're not all perfect. But you know something? There is something that God has given you that is given you for the purpose of glorifying him. And that's what I'm saying. You're all destined for greatness. Greatness is knowing that you've been faithful in the little, that God makes you ruler over much. And he says, it doesn't matter what you do on earth. If you're called to minister to 10 billion people and you're called to minister to the one, if you do it faithfully, your reward is the same. <laughs> I know it doesn't make sense, but that's how God sees it. He explained it through his word. He illustrates it through his word. And so that's the important thing. So bless you. Every one of you. And I just pray that God will just, you just receive something from this word. Something that God will just bring revelation. Because sometimes we can take things for granted. And we say, no, I don't know what I can do. Just do it. Commit it unto God. Be, going to seek his presence. Hear the voice of God. Do what he tells you to do. The more I say something, the more you do the will of God the more you know what to do. Because God will unfold wrapper by wrapper by wrapper by wrapper. And you think, oh my goodness. Oh, how do you know? How do you know what God's saying? I know because you, you get to know how God speaks to you in a certain way. 
and he constrains it upon your heart. He prompts you. There's inner promptings. He stirs you. There's something that can never get out of your spirit. As much as you say, no, nah, God's not saying that, it will still remain there. There's a stirring on the inside. The Bible says, stir up the gifts that are within you. Stir it up. Let it be stirred. Don't let them lay dormant. Whatever God facilitates you with, it's enough. All you have to rely on is a supernatural working power of the Father through Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. So bless you. Um, I'm just going to pray right now. I trust that this message, go back and read the word. I always say go back and read the word. Study. You know what? God is very consistent in his word. He's not, he's, he's, he's not double-minded. He's not treble-minded. He's very consistent. You can cross-reference a whole Bible and it still speaks of the same thing, humility and obedience. Those are the two main ingredients, humility and obedience to do what God has called you to do. Use what you have. What you do on earth will be counted and counted in heaven. Make sure that what you sow, the substance of what you build on is pure gold. In other words, don't do it lapsadaisically, superficially. Do it with all your might and do it as unto the Lord and see what God will truly do in your life. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you. <laughs> I thank you for this word right now. I thank you that this word is resonating in the hearts and the minds of your children. And Father, I pray that they will stir up the gifts that are, are within them. That Father, they will lend themselves to spiritual exercise through prayer and the reading of the word and through devotion and meditating on you, Father God. But not only that, but exercising being hearers of the, being not only hearers of the word but doers of your word that they will take what they have and commit it into your hands that father by your grace supernaturally that you will manifest your will your divine will through them and so father i know one thing that no sickness no disease no illness no nothing can stop them from fulfilling your purpose for their lives because even as they desire to fulfill what you have called them to do, they will receive the healing that they will require. When they put you first, Father God, all these things shall be added unto them. So Father, I pray that you will give them the grace as you have already, you will manifest your grace through them, your enabling power, your favor, your mercy, and your love, your love and your kindness. So that truly they know that they are, you are with them and that you are for them. So, Father, I thank you for the anointing upon their life. They are for the abiding with anointing that, that justifies who they are and what they're called to do. They are special. Every single one of them are special, but they're also unique. And because of their, their uniqueness, you can use them in a very unique way to confound the very wise. And so, Father, I pray that through each and every one of them, you will use them to confound the very wise. Oh, Father, we glorify your name and we bless you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the fervence of your word that will go way beyond this platform, but it will reach many. It will reach the unreached and touch the untouched, for the, even to the four corners of the earth to the south, to the east, to the west, and to the north. Father, to the four corners of the earth, to the east. Father, use them mightily as an instrument of blessing. I pray. Father, touch their giftings, their gifts and ability. Let the world see and come to glorify you, Lord. Let the world see of that they're unique, but there's a divine anointing upon them. 
separate them, Father God, unto your glory. Send them out as you sent your, the early disciples out. So you send us out because the harvest is ripe. But even in your word, you said the laborers are few. Those that will obey, those that will do the word. And so, Father, I pray that for each and every one of them, they will study to show themselves approved unto you. A workman actively doing things, a workman not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth through their giftings, Father. Because even our lives are read as an epistles of men. And so, Father, let our lives and let of grace be upon us that men may recognize and come to glorify. They will want to know about the Jesus in you. Father, I thank you that that grace come upon each and every person in the hearing of your voice right now in Jesus' mighty name. Let everybody just say amen and amen, amen so be it. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let, let, just say thank you, Jesus. Say, I receive. I receive. Oh, Karabasunda Rebek. I receive, Father. I receive your word, your rain word. I receive it right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Nothing. No death. No life. No height. <laughs> no, no situation. No circumstance. No man. No woman. No devil. No demon. Nothing can separate you from the love of God and God's love is that you come to the full fruition of his assigned purpose on your life God wants you to be fulfilled more than you want to see yourself fulfilled let me tell you something as God is a supreme creator God is a supreme creator he's a creator of everything ultimately He's a man, he's the one that gives man wisdom, even to create. But in every person that, that creates something, whether, it, whether it's a design, whether it be anything you see out there, any, anything in your environment has been created by someone. The creator of that thing or that environment, he had something in mind. He had a vision of something. He or she had a vision. It was a vision, and then as he applied the vision to paper, and the paper became uh, uh, an, 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 an inanimate object. In other words, it became substance. It became real. You are now seeing the benefit of that. And what I'm saying to you, as God is a supreme creator, he created you for a divine purpose. And God wants to see the best of you. He wants to see you utilize. He wants to see you maximize. He wants to see you doing great exploits in his name. He wants to see signs and wonders and miracles through you. He wants to see it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got his DNA. You are heirs of the Father and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. What belongs to Jesus it, there's an equal share with him. There's an equal, share, and you might say, "No, I'm not worthy. Don't, don't, don't. I don't want false humility." That's what the word of God says. Your joint hears with Jesus Christ. You have the full potential. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Whatever you do in your life, whatever gift you have was to heal those that are oppressed of the devil. You can bring a light and you can bring joy and you can bring hope and you can bring eternity into people's lives mm -hmm. through the gift that God has given you. Mm -hmm. And you might have said, oh, I thought that was only for um, work so that I can bring money into the kitty. No, it's so that God can be glorified through you. 
be a blessing. Yes, even a money can be a blessing of, of a truth. But what I'm saying, God has given you something. What type of God it would be who created you and you had no use? Eh -eh. That wouldn't be a smart God or that wouldn't be a good God. But God has given you, the child of God, the son of God, the children of God, everything. Everything. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all the spiritual mm -hmm. blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yes. It's in you. It's in you. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Thank you for listening. Uh, Keith, if you're there, uh, we're just going to thank God in uh, giving right now. Um, you can share the screen put up the bank details, be a blessing. Um, God is going to use you mightily. Take a hold of this word. Hallelujah. Why does Jesus always um, use children as examples? Because children, oftentimes, they don't ask questions. They just do what you do. <laughs> if you show them something, they just go and do it. They don't, they don't try and work it out and try and understand it. Sometimes we overuse our brain. We should just do it by faith. Yeah. There's a humi there's humility in just doing it and being obedient to God's word. Hallelujah. Hallel you know, every time I think, I just think about all those scriptures. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Mm -hmm. What's your understanding got to do with it? Trust. Praise be to God. So bless you. Um, the 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 account number is up there. Um, bless you, every one of you. Father, I thank you that your grace be upon their giving right now. Touch their hearts, Father God, as you touch as you have touched their lives, and you continue to do so. Bless them, Lord, and I pray even as you said in your word, as their purpose in their heart, so shall they give that there were purpose in their heart. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Keith.